With almost 70 years of service, the Queen has travelled more widely than any other monarch in British history. His tradition and duties been passed on to each generation, and in the past was always widely celebrated. But in recent years, questions have been raised repeatedly about whether the royal family should do more to address their colonial past. Well, Prince Charles attempted to broach the subject during a three-day tour of Canada. As we look to our collective future, as one people sharing one planet, we must find new ways to come to terms with the darker and more difficult aspects of the past. Well, Sunday Times Royal Editor Roy Nikar joins me now, along with uh, Kaindi Andrews, a professor of black studies at Birmingham City University. Welcome to both of you. So, Roy, uh, you've been around this royal block a long time. Um, it seems to me that what's been happening is with these royal tours, which used to be not that controversial, normally pretty celebratory, they've become now almost every single time controversial, and it all goes back to colonialism, to the British Empire, how much the royal family on behalf of this country should be apologising for the sins of our past. You've been on a lot of these tours. Are you feeling a rising tide of controversy about that? Um, I have to say, in all honesty, no. And I think it depends where you go. I mean, I, I was in Belize with the Cambridges. I went to Barbados with the Prince of Wales for the handover. And actually, he made a really interesting speech during that tour. He talked about acknowledging that slavery was abhorrent, but he didn't apologise. William did the same in um, the Caribbean, but he didn't apologise. Mm. He, he, he talked about... They acknowledged our past. I think it's right to do that. And I think we've got to recognise... It sounds apologetic it, to me. It does, but it's I not... I mean, I may not actually say the words, I'm sorry, but there's a lot of regret, a lot of... We've got to look back on the past, a lot of revisionism back to a previous era, history. And I, I just wonder where that stops, because isn't it going to affect every tour they do? I don't think so. And I think it's a recognition by members of the royal family and the palace and the government on whose, whose behalf they're travelling on lots of these tours. I kind of respect the royal family for at least acknowledging slavery of the past. I, I respect them, but should they have to apologise? Especially when you consider the fact that none of them were alive during that time. No, I, I don't think so. And I don't really think anyone should be forcing them to apologise. I mean, you're not going to force me to apologise for something my grandfather or my great-grandfather did. Why should I? I'm just a normal and regular guy. I'm not apologising for anything. You know, I'm so far removed from my ancestors, from my grandfathers. I was born here in the UK. My grandfathers were born in Africa, Nigeria. Culturally, we're completely different. You know, we have different life experiences. What they did has nothing to do with me. Similarly, the royal family that exists today, they are so far removed from their forefathers. I mean, you have Prince Harry, who's married to essentially a black woman, a mixed race woman. Life today is so different to how it was in the past. The royal family of today are completely different. So should they have to apologize? It just doesn't make a lot of sense. We can't be blaming the child for the sins of the father the royal family and the palace and the government on whose, whose behalf they're traveling on lots of these tours, that we are in different times. We didn't have tours for the best part of two years. We are in different times. Black Lives Matter has happened. Other movements have happened. And I think the royal family feel it's their, it's, you know, it's their role to sort of stay relevant, to acknowledge when things have gone wrong. And I thought that statement by William after the Caribbean tour was fascinating. He acknowledged mm. that things had gone wrong and said the whole point of tours is to go and hear and listen and reflect. Um, I, I don't think it's the role of the royal family to go around the world apologizing. Mm. And they've stopped short of that, and I think there's a reason for that. Interesting distinction. So let's bring in Kandy Andrews. I know you're not the world's biggest fan of the monarchy. In fact, you might well be one of the least <laughs> biggest fans of the monarchy. Um, but putting that aside, Kandy, this issue of whether the royal family, on behalf of Britain, should be going around expressing themselves in the way that they are about the colonial past, about the empire and so on. My question for you really is, does it really make any difference? Why is everyone clamouring? for the royals to do this. Does it really matter if the royal family keeps saying, we've got to think about what happened before, we've got to reflect and so on? Well, I think it's about time is what I would say. It's the 21st century and the Queen is the head of state of 15 countries, including my families from Jamaica. And it's frankly been ridiculous since independence and it's ridiculous now, which is why these topics are coming up. I mean, I do agree with you on this one though. 
I mean, an apology is meaningless. I mean, an apology is pointless. This is about reparations, this is about repenting, and really there's nothing the royal family could do, and the Queen in particular, to, uh, to apologise other than really resign, get rid of them, go gone, and give, give all their money back to the people they stole it from in the colonies. I mean, look, in a way, it's the same debate that people have been having in America and Britain about statues, for example, uh, of people who perhaps were controversial public figures who had good sides and bad sides. From Churchill, we saw uh, no, the, the statues it. of Churchill, Mandela and Gandhi boarded up at Parliament Square. We've just seen Margaret Thatcher's has been egged within hours of being put up. You're seeing the same thing happening in America. My point about that and about the British Empire and all of these things is that there is good and bad in all these things. Why are we no, there's, so there's preoccupied? No about, let me ask the question. Why are we so preoccupied no with looking back to times in history and focusing almost exclusively now on the negative? Because A, it's not just history, So if you, and B, the history is so negative, it shapes the present. So when you have a tour of the royal family, and bear in mind the Royal African Company was the company that enslaved more Africans than any other company in the entire world, that got rich off slavery, that got rich off colonialism, the Queen still wears jewels from India when she goes around to these places, etc. And they're wealthy because of that oppression, and then you go to somewhere like Jamaica and the Caribbean, which is poor, we're only there because of slavery, because of that oppression. That's not something that happened historically, that's something we're dealing with today. He does make a point there. Europeans and British individuals did go to Africa, did buy slaves. But the fact of the matter is, who were the individuals selling the slaves? It was black people, it was black Africans. It takes two to tango. I said this before, it takes two to tango. The responsibility of this entire thing does not rest on the shoulders of, of the royal family, of Europeans, of, of British individuals. No, we played a part. Africans played a part in this and they got rich off it. They got rich off selling these, these black people they didn't want anymore. These black individuals from rival tribes that were selling them for riches, for jewelry, for weapons, for all the nice fancy things that the British people had. The royal family obviously benefited from the slave trade. That's a fact. It's in the history books. But what you don't tend to see in the history books is the part that Africans played in the slave trade. If we're going to focus on the royal family, we're going to focus on Europeans and, and what they did to African brothers and sisters, we need to look at ourselves and think our ancestors definitely played a part and it wasn't a positive part at all. Of slavery because of that oppression. That's not something that happened historically. That's something we're dealing with today, which is why people are does, does Britain get any credit be, for this is not something in the past? Right, but does Britain get any credit for uh, helping to abolish international slave trade? Do you give them any credit for that, the country? What? No, when you are the when you are the co the country that enslaved more people than anybody else, you don't get any credit whatsoever for finally deciding to stop that practice. Really? No, there's no credit deserved, and, it, and it's and it's farcical to suggest. So that no the society, no society can get evolve. credit for stopping slavery. Right, but the, see, I, that's where I don't agree with you. I think they should get. I think everyone, countries, people should always get credit for acknowledging things are wrong and changing them. Otherwise, how do you ever evolve as a society? No, but then, so then if you're going to acknowledge it, that means you have to repent for it. That means you have to repay the debt. But what debt. does that mean, repent? People in the Caribbean today are poor. Well, no, yeah, but can't you, what, what do you people want, what do you want the, the Royals to do? People are poor because of what Britain did. What do you want the Royals, Royals to do? What is the, they should, what is the should, repentance? They should renounce. They, I will tell you right there. The only thing the Royals can do on this issue is renounce the throne, dissolve their assets, and give them to the Caribbean and India and the rest of the colonies. Simple. That, that is repentance. But realistically, can they? that's not going to happen. And you know that's not gonna happen. It's like, why do we entertain these wild ideas when it's just absolutely ridiculous, absolutely preposterous? <laughs> no way in hell the royal family are just gonna give up their riches and <laughs> to the Caribbean people. Come on. When it comes to reparations, like I said, I understand, especially if you come from the Caribbean, you are a descendant of slaves, you know? So I understand why you'd feel like you are entitled to some kind of compensation. I mean, you look at America, the Native Americans, a lot of them did get compensated for Europeans literally wiping them out. So maybe Caribbeans do deserve 
some kind of reparations maybe not in the form of money but perhaps in something else perhaps when it comes to student loans perhaps their student loans should be wiped out i'm of the opinion that if you're literally stretching out your hand and begging for not begging but asking for reparations I don't believe that reflects well on you and I don't believe psychologically it's going to help you because you're in this inferior position. If you want to succeed in life, you've got to do things for yourself. You've got to put in that hard work. I mean, we've all suffered. Every race on this planet has suffered, but that doesn't mean that you just need to, you know, give up on life and, and not try and not try to persevere and not try to actually aspire for greatness. It doesn't mean that. We're all capable individuals, every single one of us. Let's and give them to the Caribbean and India and the rest of the colonies. Simple. That That is repentance. That all is right. reparation. And Roya. anything short of okay. that, I agree with you, is pointless. Okay. Right. I mean, look, it's I, I get why passions run high about these these things. I get some of the points Candy's making. The royals aren't going to do this, though, are they? I mean, this, there's a limit to, I think, how far this is going to go. I mean, the royals will say we need to mark it and respect it and look back and reflect and so on but they're not going to go as far as Gandhi's talking about i don't they're definitely not going to renounce the throne and give up all their assets and return them to the, the caribbean and and the rest i think what we've seen in the last three tours is is the mood music change we've heard uh, charles and william reflecting on the past um they've that's clearly been in conjunction with the government and the foreign office but i think that is probably as far as they're going to go mm. You're going to be very busy the next couple of weeks. One question for you before we let you go. Is the Queen going to make her own jubilee? Lots of, I mean, she, every time we think we're not going to see her again, up she pops looking dazzling and radiant. My prediction on that is, yes, she will. She will, because she's just the ultimate trooper, right? She's the ultimate trooper. I think we'll see her at Trooping, and I think we will see her, fingers crossed, fingers crossed if she was up to it at the Epsom Derby. Kindly, despite your reluctance to celebrate the monarchy, will you say anything nice about the Queen on, as she celebrates her platinum jubilee? I don't even know what data is. That's how much I'm disinterested I have in this whole debacle. Okay, Andy, always good to catch up with you. Thank you very much for joining me. And Roya, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> like I always say, black people are not monolith. We all have different opinions. We all have different beliefs. But what I will say is, if you're not a fan of Britain, if you're not a fan of the royal family, you're not a fan of the monarch, not a fan of any of these things, why are you here? I know that guy's been making money from selling books and whatnot. Why not just book a ticket back to Jamaica, bro? Sunny, beautiful weather, beautiful women. Like, it's perfect. Why not go back to the Caribbean? That's exactly what I would do if I had the money. Interesting debate. Very, very interesting debate. And it's going to be raging for years. If you're from the Caribbean, if you're an African-American, if you're from Brazil, if you're, because quite frankly, the African diaspora is literally all around the world, you know. African slaves were everywhere. Cuba, Brazil, <laughs> the Caribbean, here in the UK, literally everywhere. So yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're going to pay reparations, you're going to have to pay a lot of people. And I'm just not sure how practical that is. But guys... Let me just leave it out. I hope you enjoyed this reaction. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you later.